Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Beep Save Forum today. Um, the ninth instalment, actually, can you believe it, since March last year, the digital format that we've got here. Really, really pleased to see you all. Um, I hope you're all well, happy and, and busy. Um, I mean, on that note, we really appreciate everybody that's managed to join today. We're on 168 and climbing. So we know it's that time of year when everybody's really, really busy. So, yeah, some great commitment for you guys here um, you know, in this busy time of year, um, well, hopefully you're busy. Um, now, actually, just as a, a side note, in September, we're hoping to host our first face-to-face -face forum in the Midlands um, since lockdown. Um, we're hoping that's going to go ahead, um, as I said, in September in the Midlands. So really exciting stuff. We're hoping that's going to going to going to happen for us. Um, and then going forward as well um, into the year, you know, we're going to do a few more digital. I think this works well and it's accessible to everybody. So I think everyone here agrees that, you know, it's a great tool for us to use to be able to, you know, access you guys that maybe struggle to get to these face-to-face -face events. But we're going to hopefully, you know, continue to um, do some face-to-face -face ones. We've got um, some planned in the year in the southeast, the north of England and also Northern Ireland. So, yeah, fingers crossed that we can we can get that done and it should be great to see you all um, have a coffee, a bacon sandwich and some some good chats. So, yes, fingers crossed for that. Um, we've got um, at the end of today, um, we've got Ian who will take us through our CEO, take you through some industry updates. Um, you know, some important things going around and, uh, you know, it's really important that if you can stick around with us till the end and listen to Ian updates because there's lots of things going on, you know, whether it's, you know, updates to the crew codes and, and things going on with glue boards as well at the minute. We'll give you an update with that and what we're doing. So, yeah, really important if you can stick around to the end because, um, yeah, we've got, a, we've got a packed agenda and we've got some good stuff coming coming up. Um, we've got Chris from Pestfix doing some bird control and lasers explained, which I'll be listening to intently, something I haven't used myself before. So yeah, it'd be great to, to see um, yeah, the use of lasers and how they can be utilized. Um, we've got Avril from Killgem doing some inspections and pest activity, what to look for, something we all need, you know, we need some refreshers on that and just some good ideas about, you know, maybe those, you know, those tricky ones that you're trying to figure out and the things to look for. Um, we'll have a comfort break at 10.55 until 11.05 for 10 minutes, just to give you a bit of a, a bit of a shake out, grab a coffee and refresh yourself. Um, and then after the break, we have Matt Towler from Lodi doing a, a talk on wasp and hornet control. So yeah, really seasonal. And I think a lot of you will be listening to that intently also um, to help you out with your work as you go on today, the rest of the week and the rest of the, uh, the season. Um, and then finally, just before Ian comes on at the end, we've got Alex Wade um, talking about, yeah, um, you know, glue boards and, and, and what we're doing to um, alleviate and practice and tools and, and, and good stuff like that. So yeah, some really detailed topics today, really helpful stuff for you and your day-to-day -day work. So yeah, keep tuned. We're up to just over 200 participants now. So again, thank you for joining us. It's a real commitment and we really appreciate that. Um, before we get started with the agenda, I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping. I think most of us are pretty used to uh, these digital forums now and, and webinars and things like that and, and what it's all about. But just as a quick update, um, so Q&A section, we have uh, the bottom of your screen, the side of your screen, depending on what device you're using, you'll see a Q&A button. Now, really important that one, because at the end of each presentation, um, I'll pop back up with a presenter. You can stick your questions that you have for that presenter in the Q&A section. And yeah, we'll, we'll read them out and we'll get some questions answered. Really important you use that. Now, we also have a chat button that you'll see very close to the Q&A button. Now, this one's for, well, as it says on the label, you know, if you want to chat or you want to, you know, make comments or, um, you know, speak to other delegates here on the forum, you can use that, but also use it for any technical issues. So if there's any um, sound issues or possibly visual issues, then just put a comment in there. We've got um, my colleagues, uh, Lauren and Sarah, keeping an eye on it and just making sure that if there are any issues you're having, they'll try and figure out what it might be and, and advise you what you can do to, yeah, to make it um, make it better for you. OK, so Q&A section for questions to the presenter and the chat section for uh, technical issues and, and general chat. Um, if you do, if you do sort of miss this part of it and you put a question in that chat area, then Lauren and Sarah will remind you just to put it in the Q&A because I, I probably won't see it. So really important we do that and we'll try and get to all the questions as well. 
Um, so CPD points, we want to know that. I've left that to a little bit later on in my introduction because sometimes people miss it and then and then ask again in the chat section. But CPD points, absolutely, for today. We've got three on offer. If you pre-registered, which you would have done to access today, um, you will have those. If you entered your prompt details or your BPCA registered details, so your membership number, then those points will be allocated to you once you bid today. Now, remember, don't leave the uh, forum because uh, we'll know and we won't give you all the points. So make sure you stay with us. There's some great talks today. So yeah, three points for that. If you are watching um, uh, uh, later on and you're not live today and you're watching this on you know, YouTube or something like that, again, you can still get some CPD points for the individual talks that you might do. You just need to register them yourself with your respective um, CPD scheme. Okay. Great. Okay. I think we are ready to go. So without further ado, Chris, if you would like to pop up next to me and we can uh, get started with your bird control and lasers explained. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi. So um, I'm going to go over, hopefully my, sh my screen will share. So I am going to go over lasers explained. So to give a bit of background on me, so um, I joined Pestfix a year ago. Um, I'm sure everybody on here know who's, knows who Pestfix are now, um, but I joined uh, the group uh, a year ago and they've been selling lasers for over eight years. I've taken the mantle on from uh, the lovely Sean Byrne, who's left us now, um, to kind of run lasers for the business alongside some of the accounts I look after. And uh, when asked, I said, I'd like to come on and, and kind of, in layman terms, go over um, lasers and what they can be used for. So, lasers explained. Get quite a few questions on where they, where can they be used. Um, realistically, along the bottom there um, is uh, the UK market. So, we currently have 160 lasers out in the field, um, and that's from the original lasers that were brought on, on board all them years ago to the brand new Avex Mark II, which we've been promoting now for for about two years. So. Um, commercial buildings, distribution centers, warehouses, you know, on roofs to deter um, seagull, mainly seagulls. Um, they work brilliantly, but also there is obviously a lot of safety margins that you need to go through with regards to installing a laser. And I'll go through that within this presentation. Some of the customers that look up and um, that have lasers on their buildings or customers of yours uh, with, within this, um, uh, this BPCA webinar that you may look after some of these guys and not realize they have a laser because they may have bought it direct or that um you know a predecessor someone someone that was looking after the site before um installed the laser so with regards to pest controllers if you if you take on a contract at a site and we use ikea as a as an example you may find a laser we're here to help you so contact us we can we can go over training on how to use that laser so that you can assist your customer moving forward so three main products, if I'm being, being honest with you, is the handheld lasers, the handheld light, which is the, the baby of the range, which is much shorter range. And then um, on the left-hand side of the presentation, you can see the Avex Mark II, designed to, to, to go on roofs, but uh, you know can be used um, in agriculture. But over, over here, unfortunately, there's a lot of um, bridle paths or... Um, you know, walkways through farms. So um, we tend to not install them in these sort of areas just due to safety margins. Today's goals is to, to, to kind of hopefully at the end of this, during the, during the Q and A, we can answer some questions. Just to go over how a laser works. So, you know, this is quite an interesting slide. You know, I can have a hundred watt, sixty watt, forty watt light bulb, which is actually take you know uses more than a 0.5 watt laser. And a 0.5 watt laser can be more dangerous because it's obviously directed, the light is directed differently. So a, a bit like this slide on the left hand side, your light bulb, obviously it's small filaments of light that are moving into the eye. Whereas with, uh, with regards to a laser, if you directed that light straight into the laser, you could cause quite bad damage. This is a class 3B laser, which is uh, on the spectrum, you know, the strongest you can get away with using without having, having you know, uh, a, a license as of such. Any laser that we sell um, or assist uh, our customers with, you have to go through training. We can't just sell one over the phone or ship you one. You'd have to go through uh, a classroom training session in order so, 
so you understand how that laser works because I'm sure you've seen in the press, you know, kids buying laser pens, maybe not kids, maybe yeah, but adults buying laser pens and directing them up into the sky at planes and whatever else. This is this is something, you know, in the, in the market of lasers, we just can't have. So we need to make sure everybody that operates a laser purchased through Pestfix um, uses them correctly. So the way, the, the way that the control group who design and, and make the laser themselves, um, they effectively put, put in uh, an expansion beam. So rather than a single dot, you get almost like an, an oblong egg-shaped laser. And that, that's, that makes the, the power of the laser um, better to operate. The laser um, has lots of risk management within itself. So with regards to when the laser is, is actually operational, it's only when you've told it to do something. So when you're setting up a laser, you need to obviously um, put a pattern on that roof and how you want the laser to, to move. It will only move when you've told it to move. So say for instance, you tell it to move 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning, it will only use the patterns that you direct for it. It's not, self-teaching so it doesn't say oh there's a bird on the roof i've got to fire my laser towards it it doesn't do anything like that it will only work as as per the way that you set the laser it's got plenty of safe, safety measures again you know this presentation that word safety will come up quite a lot but with, with regards to bird control but they obviously in order to, to push this this throughout europe and, and america you know they, they have to make sure the right safety measures are in place um, with regards to this, um, you have an emergency stop and you have an on-off key. With regards to the on-off key, you have a key and then the site will have a key. And only you and the designated person at that site are allowed to go up there and turn that laser on and off. Um, with regards to what they put in place, obviously each laser has a sticker on it and they're detailing um, the strength of the laser. Um, we will always when a laser is sold, um, ensure that warning signs are put up leading to the area and on the area, um, and also make sure that um, each site has a user manual to hand. So again, going back over that training side, we need to ensure that not only the pest controller is, is trained to use this, but also site are trained to use this, so that if for any reason there was a problem, site don't have to rely on a four hour SLA for a pest controller to turn up, they can manually turn that turn that off and ensure that the the uh, laser is isolated. And again, back back to that training, we need to make sure that it's all done online as well with regards to to the initial part. So if anybody anybody on this um, webinar wants to just understand lasers a little bit more in your own time, um, at the end there's some details for me. Pop me an email and I'll pop you some training information. It's about twenty to thirty minutes long, and at the end of it you get a little certificate. That would help you understand how a laser works and understand, you know, the, um, the, the ways in which you can use them within your um, sectors. That's the Avix Mark II. So what's good about the Avix Mark II? You, unique selling points for your customers. You know, you're only using um, light to repel birds. Um, it's clean. It, it can do long distances. It can also do multiple roofs, depending on the safety measures. Um, and, it, you know, it, it can work over a, a long term. So... I'm not sitting here saying that net netting um, isn't the option. If your customer is happy to pay for netting, 100% successful, you need to push netting. But if the customer turns around to you and says, look, and we get it all the time. When I used to work for rent to kill you know, oh, you know, that netting quite is expensive. I, I don't think I'm going to do it this year. I'll just deal with the birds. And then six months down the line, birds dropping stones, smashing, you know, and, and the customer's re-evaluating it. Rather than waiting for that, you can say, well, I can put something in place to reduce the birds between 70 and 100%. But well, we would never say we're 100% going to get rid of every single bird because as, as we know with birds, um, you know, if it's, a, if it's a nest inside, they're going to want to stay there. You need to put a pest management plan in place before they turn up in order to, to make the laser and maybe some hawking or with regards to like bird alert that's coming to the market. It's out there now. You know, you might want to use that in conjunction to, to tackle the problem. Um, but don't want to take anything away from netting. Netting is 100% successful if, if designed and installed correctly. So we want to make sure that's the first option. When a customer says netting is not an option, I don't want anything on my roof, I don't want anyone to see it. This is when a laser would come in into, into play. So key features um, and probably the best, in my opinion, the best feature to, to this is it's... Um, wireless connectivity so 
With regards to um, this laser, it can be programmed off of a tablet, a phone um, that does a iOS or Android. So very good in the sense of customer can have something uh, within their, their premise, maybe a tablet that they can use um, to um, use the laser if they need to. But with regards to you guys, everybody's got a phone. Um, it's easy to use rather than a laptop up on a roof, plugging it in like the old lasers used to be, sitting there reprogramming. Um, nowadays, it, it can all be done off a phone 10 meters away. It's modular design. So the laser sits on top of uh, um, different mounts. I'll go over that in a second. Um, but the mounts are designed to, to take um, these laser heads um, and, you know, dependent on how you need to get over the problem. And again, I'm, I'm more than happy to come out to site with you and go over this with, with you guys. But, you know, we may need to put it on a three metre pile. We may, we may need to put it on top of a, a stanchion so we can work with the customer to make this uh, to make it right. This is the way the laser is designed um, and stored. So when you receive your nice shiny new laser, this is how it comes. So um, I've gone over this already, but you have your power, power switch. Um, with regards to that, that has um, LED lights inside it. At the end of this presentation is uh, some troubleshooting on all the different colors that it can do. Um, and when, with every laser that goes out, we will be sending a poly board with all of these colors so that you know, we do get it, um, you know, laser's not working on roof A, pest controller goes out there and someone's just switched it off. You know, you customer rings you up, says laser's not working. What's the LED um, uh, panel saying? Oh, it's, it's solid red. Well, someone switched it off. You need to switch it back on. It saves, you uh, You know, productivity is huge in our market. Um, it saves you making a wasted trip to go out to laser when the customer just needs to turn it back on. Once it's turned back on, it will continue to do as you've already set. Whereas configuration, I've gone over this already, but yeah, it's uh, Avix Connect is a brilliant tool, if I'm being honest, um, with regards to setting your laser up and also quoting for your client. Um, Avix Connect is uh, definitely a, a, a selling tool for you guys. This is the, the, the sort of uh, image you will get when you're in the Avix Connector designing uh, where a laser will go. Um, with regards to this slide, as you can see, on the right hand side on the on the roof it shows where the laser should be positioned and you know we will teach you where where this is should go and again i can help you on that in the middle this is where the where the birds are three birds initially and you know it's heavy infestation where's the power you know as you can see here there's a there's a on the, on the top there's a little blue box it's, it states that that's where you want the power and again that's why the site surveys need to be done and we can't just sell them over the phone or online and we just won't because we need to ensure that and there's power to the laser, so the laser is situated in the right place. We can't just, oh yeah, I've got power over there, that's where I want it. It needs to be in the right place in order to, to deter the birds. Um, it needs to be able to cover the whole roof. So when you're going out sur surveying, um, you know, key things to look for, you know, is bird behavior. Uh, you know, I was on one yesterday on, on a roof and um, it was a laser survey. And I said, you know, we can't put a laser here. Um, the birds were, were nesting for starters at the moment. Obviously that can't happen. Um, but even when they fledged, the, the, the roof was made up of lots of different uh, sub-buildings on top of this roof, and the laser just would not work um, in the sense of it would deter them where they could see it, but there was too much, um, too many areas where the laser just wouldn't penetrate, So, which would mean that the birds would come back um, next year and start nesting again. So um, we walked away from that one, but the customer now is advised that, you know, netting is the only option, um, and they were keen to have that quote. So... Again, I'm not going to just sell a laser for the, for the sake of selling a laser. I only sell it if it's right for the job. And again, pest controllers need to, need to um, take that on board. Big one on this one, human activity. You know, if, if there's a roof that I use an example, a large supermarket chain says, I want a laser on the roof because I've got seagulls that keep dropping bones down on the floor and it's hitting my customers. And you go up there and say, how many times is this roof accessed during the day? And they turn around to you and say, oh, every day, someone's up here every day sweeping. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. The laser, the laser is not the right option. Um, now, it may be that, you know, it's a, it's a learning for the customer or there's a way we can isolate it every time someone's up there. But we need to make sure if, 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 it's, a, if it's an area that's accessed a lot, you know, we can't have the laser burst in while there's people on the roof. So this slide shows, you know, 
height is our friend, you know, uh, to quote Sean Byrne, you know, something I always picked up from him. Um, with regards to putting a laser on a roof and you've got a large area to cover, you know, height, height is your friend. You imagine with a, with a laser when you, we've all done it, you know, you put a laser in your, in your front room and the cat's running around. You put that across the garden, it makes the beam a lot longer. It's um, obviously a lot faster when it's further away as well. So you need to use height um, as your friend. Um, and then there's ways in which when we do the survey from, you know, the one metre stanchion you see there to the extensions to then obviously the extension poles at the end um, that we can assist you in that. Positioning is key. So, you know, customer says, oh, I want it there. You, you, you've got to stand your ground. We've got to make sure that it, um, firstly it's safe. It can't, this laser can't be um, shown to be used in an area where, where people, where the laser is maybe going over a road, cannot happen. And you want to, if there's a danger area like a road or a river or, or any water source, you want to position it back to that. So on a roof, you'd want it away from that. So it's um, bouncing the other way. And it may be um, in another way, you know, a high rise building, you know, you have, you have a bit of building A, which has got the birds on it, which is, um, you know, they can't do any drilling on because it's a asbestos roof and they want to put a laser on it. That's fine. It's not a problem, but we can't have it shooting over towards the high building behind it. We'd have to back it to that because you don't want obviously people looking over and thinking that the laser is shining into the, to the windows. Again, I've gone over it, but yeah, the laser cannot be, cannot at any point go across a road. Um, you know, that would distract drivers. Um, and we're all, we all get very distracted on the road anyway, but yeah, um, it would distract drivers and, and obviously could cause harm. So that's something we will not um, condone and we, we will not sell a laser if that's what the client wants. It's more on positioning, but you know, uh, it, it, it will be all gone over during the survey. So, you know, you're not going to all learn how to how to use a laser, but I'll, I'll, you know, with regards to pest fix, we now have a workforce that can assist um, any customer, um, but mainly pest controllers. We much would prefer to sell to pest controllers um, on this, um, so that we can assist you and put you through the right training, so you know how how these units work. So one, one thing the unit does have, and you see this on the right-hand side of this slide, if, it, if, the, if the unit is moved or any sudden jolts, or for instance, someone tries to pick it up, you know, a contractor says, I don't want that there. I'm going to do some work in that area. It does turn itself off, um, but it will then go into um, an error code. So that's when you guys would have to go back and, and, and put it back in place. So that's the safety function so that people can't pick the laser up and it would be going off and going off in the sky. Big no-no. Um, so we like that, but it does happen. You know, contracts are on the roof, bring some stuff up, hits the laser. It will then go into error mode because it's been hit and then you'd have to go out and reconfigure it. Power. So we're in the UK and looking out of the window right now. You know, we've not got great sunshine during our summer months. You know, that happens. Um, I much would prefer and, you know, Pestfix's uh, stance on this is that we, we would make to, uh, hardwired power to the laser um, is the only real way that we can do it. If we do have a stubborn customer that really wants solar, you know, Bird Control Group are very keen for us to use solar, but we know full well that it's not quite there yet with regards to powering something like this, especially when we get 10 months a year where it's overcast and we don't see the sun. So. Yeah, I uh, I would shy away from solar, but the option is there, and but it is a um, you know specialist um, product that we sell only um, if deemed necessary. Here's uh, some of the mounting options. So you have the, the main mounting frame, as you can see here. Um, probably seventy percent of what we sell goes go on this mounting frame. Um, you know, most roofs will be able to take a mounting frame the way uh, very much like um, uh, the intermediate mounts. You would weigh this down with either ballast or some slabs um, to prevent it moving. We have had instances uh, just recently, I went to see one in, in Kent, where it moved a foot to the right and it, it basically, the laser was projected onto different roofs, but the roof that we were on, wasn't, it wasn't projected on because it had no problem um, and the birds had gone and pecked the sand uh, bag and uh, yeah, the sand has obviously worked its way through. So now, um, you know, Sean at EWS went and put uh, some slabs on there and fixed it to, to the rail so it can't move. There was high, a high wind area right on the King Coast. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of them that, again, we're there to assist as and when needed. 
<clears throat> that same frame comes with adjustable legs if needed. So, you know, if we needed two meters height and you'd use the, um, the, the adjustable uh, frame extenders, uh, they're very good. Um, and again, you can, you can fix that, put the ballast in the center to hold it in place. Um, but these are all designed to allow, to allow air throw through. Vertical mounting bracket. Um, I know uh, a client of mine used these on an oil rig. So, uh, you know, lots of red tape there, but the client, uh, you know, the client that used them uh, did a lot of training with us. And then alongside that, did a lot of training with um, the oil rig company. And yeah, brilliant success. Um, very good pest control uh, management plan put in place. Um, but yeah, um, they use these because obviously a, a frame couldn't go on the, on the statues itself. Custom mount, you know, we have the plans for, for the modular design. So, you know, you may say, oh, I want a custom mount. And this next slide shows over, I believe this is over in Holland. You know, these, these trees were getting destroyed a month of the year. They want a laser up to deter birds. Um, so they built this frame. Um, now, you can't buy this frame, but again, we'll be able to provide you um, with the uh, the drawings so that you can go to a fabricator and say, uh, you know, we need this fabricated with these holes in order to, to, to fit. Um, I know Sean Byrne fitted one last year, um, very similar to this for a client on a roof. Um, and yeah, it works very well. Again, safety. Um, you cannot put the laser up it towards aircraft vessels or vehicles. You know, it's a big no, no. Um, it's, you know, quite self-explanatory that, but it's a, you know, I do, we do get a lot of people emailing and say, do you shoot the birds with the lasers? Uh, no, um, you know, the laser's there to act, to, to, to act, it's something different. It's something that the bird doesn't know. And as we all know, you know, as, as soon as the first bird goes up, they all go up. So the laser's not to be designed to shoot birds. It's there, they're there to act as a deterrent, so something they don't know what's there and they, and they move away. Definitely do not put it anywhere near a human being. And it can't just be put up into the sky. Um, towards an area, um, it's a big no-no as well. This is one I was talking about earlier. You know, if you do have a, a you know, a, you put it on roof A, but it, there's a high-rise building opposite. You know, these these lasers are, are very good, and you don't have to always go to the edge of the roof. Um, I, you know, like proofing, you would need to obviously proof the whole roof with the laser. Again, it's not aimed at the bird; it's it's it goes across, it spans the roof in order to deter them. So with regards to that, you don't need to go right up to the edge because you might at some point get, a, you know, a bounce off and it goes to the building opposite. You can give yourself between 10 and 15% away from um, the roof space. Water, you know, this is one, and you know, this has happened. Yeah, um, with regards to, to a laser setup, water level went up and down. And um, with regards to when the water level went down, the laser went down with it because it was on a pontoon bad weather it bounced off you know it was a learning curve it was a few years ago now but now the, the laser static on on the side of the reservoir um so yeah you know this is a big no-no and as you can imagine you know we all heard the stories of the drone that was being flown down at gatwick it can cause an absolute havoc um for the caa so a big a big no-no and i'll be there to survey that one alongside the pest controller so this is a, a typical plan so when you're when you're planning your roof um, this is this is how you would sweep the laser again we would teach you how to do this but going, going back to that you would do the front part because you can set the speed of the laser so you could do the front part quite fast but then the back part if you kept it at the same um, at the same speed that would do that like really quickly within three or four seconds you'd need to slow the laser down in order to cover the whole area and the laser doesn't track like this image shows it doesn't track along uh, along in in a way that you'd have to go from point one to two to three to four rather than trying to do the whole sweep because the laser does go up and then come down so you'd need to make sure that was done in small increments so this is going back to to the you know the error codes that can show the laser will tell you if something's wrong so you know you may have a technician you want to, to own a laser you know run the laser this is good to have in their vans alongside good to be at site so what color is the laser right okay the laser is static blue where it's, it's paused while it's been while it's bursting. It's waiting to perform the next the next pattern. It's getting itself into the next um, mode. You know, blinking red. There's an error. Something's gone wrong. You know, you need to go out and have a look. Static red. You know, the, 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 it, there's an issue with the um, with the laser. So these go out with every single laser now. Um, we had a good meeting with Bird Control Group, and they they 
Um, we're going to polyboard these just purely because we find that a lot of the calls are human error, um, but they don't call into us. They call the pest controller. The pest controller goes out and says, oh, I just switched it off. Um, or it just it just was idle. So that is me um, with regards to hopefully in time. Look at, yeah, I think so. Natalie. Great. Thank you, Chris. That was a, a amazing. Yeah, very, very um, technical. And I think something are you finding it's being used a lot more? You know, is it increased in in, in popularity over the last year yeah. or so? Yeah, definitely. So with regards to obviously, you know, the legislation that's in place, um, we get a lot more inquiries and, and we, we do get quite a lot of direct inquiries from, um, you know, uh, large companies. And we would always try and work with the pest controller rather than work with the company themselves. So um, and that's purely because the pest controller needs to take ownership of that that laser, mm -hmm. you know, because if you sell it to the end user, that person that you sold it to might do the training and then they leave. Mm. And, then, and then there's a laser just just up on the roof performing in a way that you, no one knows. So we want to make sure, we, you know, that the pest controller does that. And like I say, we're happy to assist um, on training uh, if need be. Great. Good stuff. Well, we've got uh, eight questions in here. We've got a nice 10 minutes, so hopefully we should get through them all. Um, so from Anonymous here, for my business, I think lasers will be expensive to run. How do prices stack up on our lasers, something I can monetize? So with regards to energy, if this is a question for energy, it's very minimal because it only, only uses a, you know, a small amount of power as of such. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a question that to run the laser, um, the, the, it's, it's a small amount and we can, we can do um, an energy calculator on that if they want to email me mm -hmm. direct. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's not a huge amount. It's, it's no different to, to a light bulb, I suppose. Yeah, the laser good. isn't always continuously on. So, so you will only have it have it there when the birds are there. And it's going back to that learning part. Whereas, right, when are the birds on this roof? There's no point the laser being on if they just turn up every evening. If they're not there in the morning, there's no point it being on. So you would only have the laser on on, on the evening. So it's not like it's continuously on like a light. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it'd be site site specific, I guess, wouldn't it? In terms of what it could possibly cost. Yeah. Yeah stuff definitely it's all down to the mounting options as well great um so we've got dermot here it says hi chris can these lasers be used legally in ireland yeah i believe they can be and i do believe and um, they are is some but it's a question that i can um take away uh to the team and make sure i'll get clarity on so stop i believe they touched. are out there at least sean did some work out there previously um um but yeah it's a uh, we for bird control group distribute all them here around Ireland. Mm -hmm. So it's something that um, I've not come up against yet, but I can I can clarify that. Great. Good stuff. Um, Colin here also asks, is it legal to point a laser at a bird's nest with chicks in? You would, it, the, same, the same way with anything in pest control moment, if a bird's on the nest, you leave it alone. You know, we so we need to ensure that we're planning. So, you know, laser cells through, you know, nesting season is very small, small amount of laser cells. Um, it's only really on roosting sites that we would ever put a laser on at this time of year. Um, you do not do anything to them birds within their nests. You know, I think, I think we've seen in the press recently, there's been some negatives. So we need to make sure we, we follow the guidelines that have been put in place. You do not point a laser anywhere near a bird that's nesting. Absolutely. You've got some legislation there, isn't there, that will cover all of that as well. So uh, they're, uh, yeah, tricky. I don't know if you're looking at that question from Dave, uh, maybe, possibly a bit too technical for me in terms of lasers. But yeah, he's asking about the Agri Laser handheld um, was reclassified from 2M to 3B. Um, did this increase or decrease its output and performance? So with regards to, um, yeah, so obviously a 3B laser would use more power if that's what, um, and is that, if that's what he's saying. They all come with rechargeable batteries. So like the batteries that go in the e, I think it's the e-cigarettes. So oh, um, then batteries, they come with the charger and also the batteries. So you would charge them up in order to use the handheld. Again, with regards to the handheld, you would, you, it's, on the, it's internal realistically. You know, uh, you go to customer A in a warehouse and they say they're up on the rafters inside here. They can't do no netting. Mm -hmm. But once a week, we would need to come and get rid of them. You can use a handheld for that. Um, we sell quite a lot of handhelds for airports it's because they're on the they're on the move and they need to move a flock from area A rather than have a static laser they would always use a handheld so 
yeah, we, we do very well actually out of the hand. They actually sell a lot, but they're obviously a much cheaper price point. So mm. for a lot of people, they would use that first to show the client that it's working. And then maybe if a static laser is needed, they go from there. Yeah, good plan. Great. There's a couple, a couple of you asking for your contact details. So maybe when uh, when, we're, when we're done um, uh, in, in five minutes, stick it into the chat section and they can access your contact details there. That'd be no great. Worries. Um, and he had it on the end of your slide just there, but it might have popped off too quickly for them. Um, okay, so Eddie here, he says, what type of mounts and heights are used for lasers on a solar panel field slash farm? So again, it's all subject to survey. It depends on the distance you're trying to you're trying to, to cover. So if the field slash farm is 100 metres, um, then you'd obviously want to be as high as you can to get to get the best coverage. Is it a slight grey area with regards to solar panels? Because solar panels are designed to obviously take energy in. So when the laser goes across a solar panel, effectively, rather than what you would usually think, it bounces off. It doesn't. It, it it obviously goes into the solar panel. The light gets absorbed. So you'd need, you know, what I call clear clearance between each each set of panels. Which, let's be honest, now in these solar farms, they're making them as small as possible in order for the birds to see the to see the light. Mm -hmm. And it's all down to that. Now, if it was a roosting site, for instance, and it's, it's of an evening as a, in low light, the laser would be brilliant because obviously they would see the whole beam. But if if it's um, in the morning that they're, they're there or, or, you know, you want to work with the customer because they're nesting underneath. So this year coming, next year coming up, you want to put a laser in place and run some hawks. Then if it's during the day, you would lose quite a lot of light. Mm -hmm. So again, you need, you'd lose that range. So again, I'll put my contact details in, but if anyone's concerned about range, we do have some slides with regards to and different times of the day, what sort of coverage you will get on which st uh, style of laser. Great. Is someone asking about, uh, Chris asking about a video, if you have it on working live, so they can um, see if it's, you know, have that video sort of training mm -hmm. there. Is there anything you have on that? So there's, a, there's videos on our website on, um, on the lasers and how they, how they work on different birds. Um, so feel free to pop onto our website and have a look. Um, but again, I'll put my contact details in. I can forward these over if anyone's got any questions. Great. Um, so Steve here says, you described setting up the laser's pattern of use. Does it just follow one pattern or can these be multiple ones and how many? M multiple patterns. Um, so you'd set up multiple patterns. I think I, I touched very briefly because I was con uh, conscious of time. But you would, uh, going back to that slide where I said you'd do the first bit fast and the back bit slow. That's two different patterns. So you, you, I think if you can have up to 20 different patterns, I have to clarify that, because realistically, most have a maximum of five. But you may have roof one, roof two, roof three. You're at the highest point with the laser. You'd obviously want roof one and run their patterns, go into roof two, into roof three. So you can have different patterns for different roofs. Mm. Fantastic. Um, we've got a, quite a few international listeners here and uh, someone's asked about importing the lasers to other countries. Um, is, is that something that can be done? Bird, bird control group uh, across the world as such. I did have a, a slide showing where they were. Um, we obviously just distribute for, for the UK and Ireland um, for mm. them. But yeah, they, they distribute all over all over Europe, Africa and I believe America now. So yeah, they, they, they can. It, again, I can put them in touch with the right person at Bird Control Group if need mm. be. Fantastic. Again, you'll you get your contact details in there in, in just a moment. Um, Roland here says, I think my biggest worry would be pooling water after, say, perhaps heavy rainfall after an installation. Is that something? With regards to pooling water on the laser itself? Well, well, no, I'd imagine where, I'm not sure, he didn't really elaborate on it, but mm. um, the biggest worry of, of pooling water uh, in an area where... I was where probably talking about the, the laser would be shooting off of uh, pooling water. Yes. Um, yeah, so most, most, you know, the majority of roofs that are designed over have drainage. And one of the reasons we get called as pest controllers is because the drainage is blocked due to birds. So, you know, you may get some pooling water and that's something that the pest controller would need to look into. So buying a laser to sell to your client is an, I bought a laser, I put it on a roof and I'm leaving it alone. You know, this is quite an expensive piece of kit. So you put in place a service agreement and you, you would be able to go there to determine if there was pooling water or if you turned up during the rain and there was a pooling water in an area, that's obviously a concern. So it's a, again, going back to that safety margin, it's stuff you'd need to take into consideration. Most roofs are designed to obviously move water. 
um, yeah. flat roofs, yeah. you can obviously get some cooling water. And it's, it's, down, it's down to um, uh, the survey and obviously looking into that as you go to sell. Great, fantastic. And um, we've got a few more questions in there. We're coming, uh, just coming up to 10 past 10. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave them there. If you don't mind, Chris, actually, you can see the Q&A section, can't you? Mm -hmm. um, and it, it says you can type an answer there. So once um, you pop off, if you don't mind typing some of the answers to the, the questions there and the guys will be able to see it and, and yeah, they'll be happy. That'd be great. No worries. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Chris. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful rest of the day and we'll catch you later. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you.